Utah's running back room is stacked with talent, but who will emerge as the top guy? And is the offensive line strong enough to pave the running lanes necessary for each of those backs to have success? All that and more on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening into our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media, where you can follow our show at Locked On Utes on X. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. New customers can join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. You can FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. My name is JT, which is a former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined on today's show by Alex Naples of KSL Sports, a producer and a commentator there as well. And Alex, this is a Utah football team that is pretty stacked with talent, right? We've been talking throughout spring ball and everything. And like when you just go through the roster, you're like, oh, they're good here. They're good here. Running back is another one where they're very good at. They do not have one of the best running backs in college football currently. But they have a number of quality backs and a number of, of running backs that I think if they were at other programs and that being powerful programs would be the top dog at those programs too. So the question then becomes, who will be running back one this fall? There's a lot of worthy candidates. We're going to dive into all of them as we're going to kind of go through the order, like say, this is who we think will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four. As of this exact moment, based on how spring ball is playing out and the information we have even going into it, I believe Makai Bernard will be on the field more than any other Utah running back at this moment. I am not sure he will be the best pure runner with the ball in his hands. He's going to be right up there. There's a lot of guys who are good at that. He's by far the best pass catcher out of the backfield. He's also the team's best pass protecting back. And he's still a very strong runner with the ball in his hands too. And I felt like he was going to have a really great season last year. Just got taken away from him from the injury. So we got to see him briefly in the bowl game when he came back there. But this is an opportunity this season, I think, for him to really be the leading guy in this backfield. It's been always kind of like 1A and 1B. And I do think we'll see a lot of these guys rotate in frequently. But I think most of the time in the biggest like moments of the season, I, at least when it pertains to especially rushing the ball, I think Mikai Bernard is probably going to be the guy a lot for that experience and the dual threat versatility he possesses. Yeah, and just as you mentioned, out of all the running backs in that room, um, at this level, Mikai Bernard is the most experienced. And huh? we, it, naturally heading into the season last year, it, he was going to be running back number one. Unfortunately, like you mentioned, that season was cut just a bit short. Yeah. But I still expect Mikai Bernard to come back, bounce back, and have a really solid year because of his experience, because of kind of what you know you're going to get out of Michael Bernard when he's on the field, I think that he's going to have um, – it, it's it's kind of his spot to lose at the moment, I feel like. I feel like that number RB1 spot is Mikai Bernard's to lose. Um, but I think I think Mikai is going to have a good bounce back here. He's going to come back in with a group. Uh, and it helps when there's a lot of that familiarity coming back. Um, obviously, Cam, obviously, Brandt, um, a couple others here and there. But – Makai Bernard's probably going to be the most important running back for Utah next season. Definitely feels like it. When we're talking about Bernard, we mentioned the experience. Well, we'll give you some evidence of how what experienced he is. The last time he played a full season in back-to-back -back fashion, that being 21 and 22, he had over 500 yards rushing in both of them and had over 200 yards receiving, and especially back in 2022, actually had over 300 yards receiving. So we know he has a trust of Cam Rising, and that is going to be a big difference maker too. And Makai, of course, has battled some injuries. So what's nice is Utah isn't going to have to run him into the ground. There are other capable backs that I think are more than – capable of stepping up and making big plays. There's a lot of guys for the number two spot to me. Jalen Glover's been waiting in the wings for two years now. He's been the, kind of the third guy for both of those years. I'm sure he'd love to be the second guy here. Mike Mitchell's come on extremely strong, but I don't want to overreact to spring. I'd rather focus back to what I've seen on the field. Now, granted, it's a new level of football this guy is going to be at because he'll be coming up to the power four level when he was playing in the FCS, but he was at Idaho, and that was a pretty good Big Sky school still. A lot of things they were able to do. Shout out Big Sky Conference. But when you're talking about Woods to me, this is a guy who has a thousand-yard season at Idaho. He comes from a system that likes to run the ball. Uh, Utah wanted him. He wanted to come to Utah. 
I think they're going to embrace each other. And I think Woods' experience, his shiftiness, his toughness is going to be a difference maker for this team. This is a transfer. I think it's going to work out really well at all. And as I said, I think Mekhi Bernard will be running back one. I'm still leaning towards like who's going to lead Utah in carries and maybe even rushing yards. I Part of me really wants to say Anthony Woods because I think he's going to have that type of a monster season. And ever since they added him from Idaho, I, I thought big things were coming. And I know we've seen some other guys rise up the ranks in spring ball. But if I had to bet on this moment, who's going to be number two just overall on the depth chart, I'm going to go with the guy who has a thousand yard season as a collegiate running back, which Woods of the next three guys is the only one he can say. He's actually, even Makai doesn't have a thousand yards, you know, a single season, which is what he did last year, that being Woods. I think heading into I think heading into uh, just looking at the depth chart at the moment, I think there's a really big debate between you know going number two Glover or going number two Woods. I really like what I've seen from Woods. Um, as you said, uh, he, I think he's going to be a transfer that's going to come in and surprise a lot of people. Um, Anthony Woods, even though he came from Idaho and the Big Sky, right? He's still I think he's going to insert himself into this offense very well, and yep. and he's going to surprise a couple people. I don't think a lot of people really know what's coming in with Anthony Woods, but just from what we've been able to see on film, just from what yep. he's been, the numbers he's been able to put up at Idaho, I think he's going to come in and surprise a lot of Utah fans. And he's going to quickly become one of one, a fan favorite. I feel like. I think so too. And I'm excited to see him break out, have those big games, those big moments that could make the next guy that I'm going to bring up in some ways. He's already become a fan favorite because he's stuck around, right? I'm talking about Jalen Glover. And once again, I could easily go Mike Mitchell here. He is having an unreal spring camp. We're talking about a guy who's a former four-star recruit. And last time he was in his high school career, he had 240 carries in his career two over 2000 yards, eight yards of carry 22 touchdown and nine, 100 yards rushing game. And we're talking about a guy who played high school football in Florida, which is of course one of the premier high school football States too. So part of me is like, ah, do I want to go against him? Jalen Glover also, plays high school football in Florida though and he's a pretty good running back and what does Kyle Whittingham value so so much trust in his guys he trusts Jalen Glover Jalen does a pretty good job taking care of the football I don't think he had many fumbles if any last season too and it just seems like each year we've been waiting for see his role increase with this team right you look at it in 2022 this is a guy who had 78 carries for 360 yards last year 137 carries 562 yards and he averaged over four yards of carry in both seasons too I expect him to get a, a large amount of carries too. And just because he has been here longer and he's, I mean, just getting stronger, the understanding of the playbook, the trust, all of those things. Jalen Glover is my RB three. Jalen Glover. He's a fun guy. He's a fun player to watch. And you know, last year, obviously Makai goes down and there was a big question mark as to who was going to step up. And I think, I think overall Glover did a, a well enough job stepping in for, for Michael Bernard and kind of being RB one last season um, at times. And, but there was something I feel like with Glover, there's still an extra gear that needs to be achieved there. I feel yeah. like there's still more. Yeah. He He's far from the finished product. He's far from reaching his potential. And I really hope that he's able to achieve that this season. I really hope that we're able to see kind of that next gear, Jalen Glover come into that 2024 season um, and, and really take control of, of a bigger role in that running back room. Because it, it, as we're talking about it right now, it is a very good stack running, running back room at the moment with a lot of talent and, Jalen Glover is going to have to do something to stick out in that group. And I really hope it's just taking it to that next level, taking it, take, kicking into that next gear, um, which at moments I feel like we, he kind of missed at moments last season. It's true. He, he definitely did. There were times he had a nice moments. to mention four yards per carry. Right. But like, there wasn't i didn't feel like he broke a lot of tackles if we're being honest with that as well there weren't a ton of like breakaway runs like he got loose like he's still been very good we're not saying that but he hasn't obviously there's a reason he's rb3 here and was even last year right you see you saw why jaquin and jackson and mckay bernard coming in the year were still one and two but another year for him another opportunity to rise up to so right now we agree he would be the third guy i do want to talk about mike mitchell though we could even talk about some of the honorable mention backs in a moment too and we still got to dive into all the stuff with the offensive line we're going to be discussing all that and more in one moment but first I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of our episode of locked on news today our friends at FanDuel. the sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel makes it even easier and more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get 200 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tourney mlb nba nhl and so much more so visit fandu.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win it's capital l n o in 
Locked On. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And keep speaking of FanDuel, Alex, we got some great games this coming weekend as the final four is officially here. Whether the first matchup is NC State, we're going to see them get to take on Purdue. So we get Burns versus Edie. I can't wait for that. Personally, I'm going to roll with the Boilermakers there to get the win. Edie's coming off a 40-point performance. And NC State, yes, it's been an unreal Cinderella run. They're actually the I saw so they're the first ever team with 14 losses to make the final four. Unreal what they've been able to achieve. And then you look at it from the opposite side of the bracket over there. UConn has been unbelievably dominant. And Alabama, is, it's great for them. They've gotten this position, and I think they have a chance to still do it. But this UConn team feels like a team of destiny. I think UConn and Purdue are going to be the two we see in the final four. That's where I would put my money. Where do you land on the two final four matchups? I think I agree with you. I think it's going to be a, no, a number one versus number one, UConn versus Purdue. And look, if any team's going to repeat, it's going to be this UConn team, right? We haven't seen a team repeat since, what, 2007? They are very, very good. If anyone can do it, it's going to be this UConn team, but you can't bet against Zach Eady and Purdue. I got Purdue winning the March Madness tournament. Oh, you got Purdue winning it all. I like it. I'll be talking about who I think will be winning it all a little later once we get to the day of the game. But if you guys want to make your picks for March Madness, especially the Final Four and the Women's Tournament, it's also been fantastic. We just saw what Caitlin Clark was able to do here tonight. Some great games over on that side, too. Make sure you head over to FanDuel today. Alex, coming back into this one, let's talk about the last running back that we didn't really fail to mention. And this is no shade to Dejon Stanley, who I think will be used in different packages in different ways. John Randall has a chance to maybe see the field, right? Charlie Vincent's old reliable still. Maybe he gets some carries in some situations and games. But it does feel like Mike Mitchell has separated himself from the other True freshman running backs last year are now going to be a sophomore. I mentioned some of the stats and the things he's been able to do. We've heard he's gotten stronger and added strength. I think we are going to get a taste of what he's capable of next year. But after this year, I mean, Woods, I think, has an extra year eligibility left, so we'll see what he does. But we know that Micah Bernard, Mikai Bernard is going to be gone after this one. So that's where I think this is the year we see some really strong taste of what's to come for Mitchell. And I think a, a year from now is when we see the real breakout from him. Yeah, look, and Mike Mitchell has been a guy who's been thrown around, thrown around a lot in, in – uh, during spring ball, as you know, coaches are are seeing his praises. Coaches are saying, "Hey, this is a guy who's really impressed us in spring ball." We're very excited to see what he can do on the field. And I agree, um, Mitchell. He's he's got speed. He's he's got kind of that that downhill running back um, that 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 I don't think we've seen in Utah for for a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what Mike Mitchell is able to continue to do through through the, the last couple of weeks of spring ball and hopefully just carry that momentum into into the fall and we see, see him get some get see him get some really good opportunities on the field this upcoming season. I'm excited to see how the running back room all shakes out. A lot of talented guys. Whoever emerges as running back one, I feel good about them because they beat out some stiff competition in order to earn the top spot in Utah's backfield. And, of course, we talked about the running backs. Running back position is extremely dependent on what the offensive line is going to be able to do for Utah. And Utah, as of this moment, has a very interesting offensive line, at least the one that we've heard the most about so far in spring ball. Caleb Lomu and Spencer Fano are both going into just their second years. Lomu has never started a game, and if he got experience, I think he did in limited fashion and blowouts, never in like heated moments. Fano, obviously a pretty for, – for being a true freshman, a pretty good year as a left tackle, but I think the right transition back to right tackle where he spent most of his high school career will be even better for him, and I am expecting a good year out of him. But it's just an inexperienced offensive line is the theme I want to get at here. Coley, the projected starting center, has less than 10 starts in his career at center. Tongai played a lot last year. He was the other tackle, that left tackle that rotated him with Fano. He only started two games. And yes, Michael Mokafisi has a lot of career starts, 26 of them. If you were to say what has kind of been one of the weaker links of the Utah offensive line, I would probably say Mokafisi at times has been. He's still been really good. There's a reason his team's had success, had some nice moments as a run blocker in particular. But in pass protection, he has had some of his woes and issues. So this is not the, like two years ago, we got Braden Daniels, Satawa Laumea back, Keaton Bills. Even last year, you have Keaton Bills and Satawa Laumea coming back. This year's group is doesn't – you don't have that name power like that. But also say this, Braden Daniels, Satawa Laumea, Keaton Bills. At one point, we were all unsure about those guys. They figured it out. I think it's nice that a lot of these guys got experience last year. In Jim Harding, we trust. So even though this is a young projected offensive line right now, I'm not overly concerned. I am slightly concerned. But it's a Utah offensive line. Even when they haven't been great like last year, they're still pretty good. And I expect them to still be able to open up those rushing lanes and keep Cam rising upright. 
And I think you you hit on a very important point right there is is Jim Harding. I think Jim Harding mm-hmm. does a fantastic job in, yes. in coaching these young guys up. Um, it's the reason why Keaton Bills, you know, fans were uncertain about him at first, but he was able to become this fantastic uh, uh, lineman. It has a lot to do with coaching. And yes. I think I think Jim Harding sometimes doesn't get the praise that he deserves, but because he really is good at developing this young talent, which is why I'm not overly concerned about the Olin as you are, because they have a leader and 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 a coach like Jim Harding who's just going to coach them up and hopefully get them to get them to their ceiling, get them to reach their potential, and hopefully move on to the next level. Right? I think uh, I, I think guys like Fano are going to be fantastic this upcoming season. As a true freshman, he showed signs that he has a really, really high ceiling. Yes, Very excited to see what Spencer Fano is able to do. Um, I think there is a lot of talent in that O line, and I think Jim Harding is just going to do what he can to to help them reach their potential, as he's done in the past. Right? In Harding, we trust, as you mentioned. Harding, hey, put it on his shirt. I like it. And Harding, we trust. So, got to feel pretty good about the state of this Utah offensive line. And you know, you mentioned the leadership of Jim Harding. This is where I will give, say, like Michael Mokafisi, he's been through a lot where I think he can be a leader on the field to these guys, right? Show them the ropes a little bit, work them through. And all these guys we're talking about here as well, right? Like Satao Laomea has had a role in men- mentoring both Lomu and Fano. Keaton Bills has been another guy who's been a leader in this room. So they've learned from some of the best Utah offensive linemen. They've been a part of a lot of success. All these guys are. They know what the standard is. They've been training day in and day out. So you do have to feel pretty good about this offensive line. And look, it's, the pass blocking is going to be incredibly important. Utah has run blocked well for years, and last year they were pretty good at it too. They weren't exceptional at it, hence why at times Utah's running game didn't get off as strong as we we hoped it would in some of their, their contests. But the pass protection aspect is going to be what's most important because Cam Rising has dealt with some injuries. So it's going to be how do all of these guys hold up in one-on-one situations because they're going to be threatened with that. Off the top of my head, I cannot name a dominant Big 12 pass rusher that's coming back. Now, I will also say it's hard in general to name like dominant college football defensive linemen coming back from each year because the best guys usually go off to the NFL for a reason, right? And the one thing that Utah does have going for them, though, about whoever they see in the Big 12, some of the best pass rushers they're going to face are already up on the hill in Connor O'Toole, in guys like Van Fillinger, in Lander Barton if he decides to blitz and things of that nature. So I do feel like this offensive lineman has more than enough time to come together, build that chemistry in pass protection that plagued this offensive line when they didn't have it last fall and get themselves ready to keep who I believe will be the best quarterback in the Big 12 conference upright come 2024. I agree with you 100% in the fact that when you're up, when you're going up against practices against Connor O'Toole, Van Fillinger, mm-hmm. and that defensive line, you're going to learn a lot. You're, you're going to learn a lot because mm-hmm. I, I do think that they're going to be the best D-line heading into the Big 12 uh, next season. You got these young guys who are going against top, top players in college football, and you're the – you're just going to learn from from that, from those experiences. You're just going to learn from that. And I think that's going to really gear up these younger O-line players to just be better, to just get better, learn, learn in practice. um, Those types of, in those types of situations where you are going to be facing tough defensive linemen around the big 12. And like I said, when you're going against some of the best in college football, you're just going to, you're just going to make your younger guys better. And I think that's huge for, for that O-line. I think it's huge, and I can't wait to see how this offensive line does end up coming together. I will say this. I, As of this moment, if you had to say, like, okay, would you bet, like, who's going to be the starting offensive line? I would say it's pr- it would be this group of guys if I had to put money on it. But if I could reserve judgment, I would do that because I'd never expected Spencer Fano to start at left tackle last fall, and that's what we have saw play out. So I will very much so say we'll wait and see what the final iteration of it's going to be. But if it is this group of guys come the fall, I will be a little bit like, let's just see it work out. But I would still be like, okay, I feel like more than likely this is going to be a pretty good group because they still have some experience, even if they don't have as much as some of the Utah offensive lines of years past have had. So going to be something that's fascinating to watch as not just spring ball, but fall camp continue to roll on. Something that was surprising to watch was that Raleigh Wooster entered the transfer portal. I know some people have said they weren't too surprised by that, but still one of those things. He's been Craig Smith's guy for so long. A little bit surprising to see him enter the portal. We're going to talk about what his departure means for the University of Utah men's basketball program in one moment 
moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes, our friends at Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV sticks that you can plug into your existing TV that provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether you're into the opening weekend for baseball or a college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and so much more. You can keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices if you haven't checked out fire tv channels you should trust me on this one to learn more visit www.amazon.com slash fire tv alex the running utes lost what was at the beginning of the year their starting point guard we know what davon smith was able to come in and do but raleigh wooster was the guy early on in this season was really good for utah early on helping them do some big things throughout the tournament. We're talking about a guy in Wooster who kind of ran the show for this Utah team at, po- at point. Average basically 10 a game, 9.9, 4.9 rebounds, 5 assists, shooting 40% from the field to not the greatest three-point shooter on the year. But look, his defense was pretty stout too. Early on, the best version of this Utah team, and this is where it would have been interesting because, you know, Davon Smith, obviously everything he was doing with the triple doubles off the bench, he was unreal too. But some of the best ball we did see this Utah team play was with Raleigh Wooster at the helm, his familiarity with what Craig Smith likes to do, as well as just his veteran because of how long he's been around and playing the sport, having a guy who made the NCAA tournament with Craig Smith all back all those years ago was a big thing for this team. So this will be a little bit of a loss in terms of just like right now, like if you look at and with Davon Smith, right, if he comes back, then you don't feel – as shaky about it and we expect him to come back as of this moment but it is one of those kind of interesting things where if you're this utah team it's always nice to have that returning experience back so i I still think it hurts a little bit and i feel bad for raleigh that he didn't get to see this season through because he was having his best at the running as a running ute when he got hurt oh absolutely 100 percent. and i think you kind of hit it on the uh, on the the nail on the head, right? Where you lose that leadership, you lose that veteran player, a guy who's very familiar with what Craig Smith does and what Craig Smith likes. You're losing. You, I think that's where the biggest loss comes from in this transfer is you're just losing that familiarity, that veteran leadership, um, and that's something you know that's something that that's super valuable in the locker room, right? You you need guys like that to to make sure that the locker room. Um, basically buys into what Craig Smith is doing. And he's, he's a guy who's embodied that because of his longevity with Craig Smith. Um, unfortunate loss, but I hope he does well wherever he goes. Yeah, I do too. And I'm sure some of you are screaming at your TV, like Raleigh was terrible or all these things like that. And look, and first of all, he wasn't terrible. You no, know, he was never a world beater. He was never one of the stars of this team. He was never one of the top point guards in the Pac-12. This year actually might have had a chance to end up as being one of them, but he didn't get to play in Pac-12 play really overall. But he was a very capable starting guard. And I'll also say this. I know that Raleigh wasn't perfect. Be careful what you wish for, because we knew what Raleigh was at least. And sometimes the grass ain't always greener on the other side. And I'm not talking about Davon Smith. He did some unreal things, but we just don't know how this whole transfer cycle usually kind of plays out like that. So the guard position, rather than having someone who was solid there, now is an unknown and a gamble. So the gamble could pay off. And it's not a gamble for you, Dodd Raleigh moving on, but like just that unknown could turn into an upgrade, but it could also become even worse, especially in a tougher conference. So that's where I think Utah will feel the loss of not having Raleigh as well. And And look, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of this all plays out. We are recording this episode a little earlier in the week, so we don't know exactly how the NIT unfolds at the moment. But I I will say this also with Raleigh transferring in, it does help to have him as a veteran. But when this you Craig Smith and co Co did say they want to change some things up recruiting wise, right, Alex? So I'm sure one of those is also getting a little bit more athletic at the guard spot to pair to a guy next to a day of on Smith. And I think this is where, you know, one of the positives, the transfer portal comes in, right? You don't necessarily have to go out and get uh, a guy fresh out of high school to come in and recruit him and, and bring him in um, and kind of take over that position, right? You can start look at options in the transfer portal and bring in a, a, a more athletic guard, right? From yep. the transfer portal. And then, and I think that's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what shakes up at that guard position for Utah, but 
this is a moment for Craig Smith and that staff to kind of look at the transfer portal and try to take advantage of that uh, of of that situation. Bring in someone who who you can rely on, who's more athletic, and kind of change things up that way. I'm excited to see who they decide to turn to. It's going to be fun to monitor all offseason. We already heard Utah's name attached to some of the transfers. The portal is always wild and crazy, and can't wait to see how it all takes shape for the running Utes men's basketball team. Alex, thank you for joining us. Make sure you guys give Alex a follow on X. He is Napolis Alex. Once again, Napolis Alex on X. Great stuff as always, Alex. Thank you. And um, also tell everyone where they can kind of find some of your stuff. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the invite. Always a pleasure to be here with you on Locked on Utes. And yeah, if you want to head over to uh, X, give me a follow at Naples Alex. Um, I'll be posting Utah stuff, posting RSL stuff, basketball stuff, uh, you know, wherever KSL sends me. I'm there. Make sure you guys head over and check it out and make sure you guys continue to keep up with Locked on Utes. Lots more great content coming as it pertains to spring ball and everything else going on at the University of Utah. We look forward to seeing you then.